AQA, A-level physics, alternating currents. Uh, this bit of the specification is what we're going to do now. So direct current, DC and AC. Direct current flows in one direction only. Alternating current, it's the direction of the current alternates. Now, direct current, it could be steady DC. In other words, the value of the current doesn't change. Or the actual value of the current might like a discharging capacitor. That's DC. Uh, but alternating current goes backwards and forwards. OK, now this power supply will give us an AC voltage from those yellow terminals, or we can get a DC voltage from the red and black. And an AC voltage gives us an AC current. Sounds a bit strange, an alternating current voltage, but you know, it's an AC voltage, an alternating voltage gives us an AC current. We can look at changing voltages with an oscilloscope. An, oscill an oscilloscope is basically a voltmeter. Uh, and there's a little dot. And the bigger the voltage, the dot goes up and down. Uh, and if you want to know how the voltage changes with time, then you make the dot go sideways at the same time. And what you get is a thing called a trace which is basically a graph of voltage against time. So uh, uh, an oscilloscope gives you a graph of voltage against time if you want to see how a, a voltage changes with time. There's loads of switches and knobs, and you don't need to know them all. You only need to know two. You need to know the sensitivity uh, and the time base. The sensitivity is volts per division, and that is vertically. So vertically, how many volts do you need to make the dot go up one division? And it could be something like 0.1 volts per division or 20 millivolts per division or whatever. Uh, so the sensitivity is vertical. The time base is horizontal. And this is seconds per division or milliseconds per division or possibly even microseconds per division. And it's basically how long it takes the little dot to travel one little square horizontally. Yes, so it's our time axis is the time base and the sensitivity is our Y axis. And we can use uh, an oscilloscope to measure the amplitude of a signal or we can use it to work out the frequency by measuring the period. So you have a go at this question. And I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. Note that the amplitude is from the middle to that peak. OK, uh, it is possible that you might be asked or you might be given what we call the peak to peak voltage. And the peak to peak voltage is from the very top to the very bottom. But basically, it's usually just the amplitude that we are interested in, which is from the middle zero to the top. Here's another little interesting one. And I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. Now, a bit more about AC. Look at these two circuits. Can you see the difference between them? In one of them, we have a DC power supply, a variable DC power supply. And in the other one, we have an AC power supply. Now, imagine that we vary the DC power supply until the brightness of the two bulbs is the same. So these are two identical bulbs. And if you adjust the DC voltage until they are exactly the same brightness, and that basically means that the power of the bulb is the same. So V squared over R or I squared R is the same. Then what you find is now if if it's a sinusoidal AC, then what we find is that the equivalent DC voltage, in other words, the DC voltage which has the same power uh, is the peak voltage divided by root two. So VDC, the equivalent DC voltage, 
is the peak voltage divided by root 2. And we call it the RMS voltage. RMS stands for root mean square. Okay. Uh, why is it the RMS voltage? Because basically what we do is we take lots and lots of values of the voltage and we square them. And then we take the average, the mean, and then you take the square root. Now, in the case of sinusoidal AC, uh, you can actually derive the fact that V DC is V naught over root two. Uh, if you say, well, if V is V naught sine omega T, which is just a general equation for something that varies sinusoidally. And if you square it, so V squared is V naught squared sine squared omega T. Uh, and you'll notice it gets rid of all the negatives. It varies between zero and one. And so the average value of sine squared omega T is a half. And then we square root it again and we get our equation here for sinusoidal AC VDC. The equivalent DC value is V naught over root two. To be honest, I wouldn't worry too much about that just remember the equation at the end okay uh, and as i said what we're doing is we're actually taking lots of samples of the voltage squaring them finding the mean and then getting the square root yeah uh, and it's the rms voltage in kinetic theory do you remember the rms velocity in a gas uh, oh actually we haven't done that yet we will do that um so uh, that's VRMS and IRMS is I naught over root two. And now in this country, our main supply is 240 volts AC, and that is the RMS value. So that 240 volts is the RMS value. The peak value is 339 volts. Uh, if you use a, an ammeter or a voltmeter, it tells you the RMS value automatically. If, it, if you're using AC, if you want to measure AC, then you need an AC meter and that AC meter will tell you the RMS value of the voltage or the current.